That he can open my eyes to see the Father. That's what your trials and your tribulations are all about. Or did he die for uh, the world? I'm more intimate with me than with him. What good is it going to do? You want to know who my first love was? Is he not worthy to be his? I was expecting like the mic drop introduction, but I didn't get it, you know. I mean, yeah. that's, that's how it goes. How's everybody doing this morning? Great. Great. Okay, you brought your seat belts? No? Well, we better buckle up. Got a lot on my heart, and I'm stalling for a minute just to see what it is. Okay. Ah, so, Father, just give us ears to hear you, what this, your Spirit is saying to us this day. It's all I ask, and let everyone here receive what they came for from you in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right. Well, for some of you that weren't here the last time I spoke, uh, people have been asking me a lot of questions about that. I'm going to put it very, very simple. It was all about rededicating the temple because of a lot of things, a lot of repentance that was happening at the uh, conference, Love Israel conference, in that prayer room. A lot of brokenness in that prayer room and praying for the entire body, not just for seed of Abraham, but for the entire body of Christ. Are, are you with me so far? Listen, this is... If you get anything out of what I said the last time, <laughs> please get this. We are to pray for the entire body. If one part of the body messes up, every part and every member is affected. It's not just here. We can't be concerned with just where you are. Are you following me? Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying? So we pray and we repent for the entire body body. And one of the things that he was showing me and showing us in that rededication of that temple, everything was built to God's specification. Is that right? Yeah. He gave them the knowledge to build what he wanted to build, how he wanted to build, and the way that he wanted to build, correct? So the chief cornerstone in which we build on is who? Sure. Right? Is that right? You can say it out loud. I want you to say it out loud. You know why I want you to say it out loud? Because we're not used to saying it out loud. That's why we're in the mess we're in, because we're quiet. Hello? You can talk about some football. Woo! Football season, man, you can just be rooting for your team, but somebody's hurting in, in the store that you're in, and you're absolutely, positively quiet like you don't know him at all. Am I right? I know I'm right. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> so listen. One of the things after Solomon, had ded they dedicated the temple and he was sleeping at night and the Lord woke him up and he began to, to show him some things. He said, I want you to understand that my presence will be in this place, right? That my eyes will be ever on this place, right? And he said, my ears will ever be attentive to prayers made in this place. Is that right? That's Second Chronicles chapter 7. Did he not say that? That's what's written in the word, right? So you are the temples of the Holy Spirit. So his eyes are ever what? Aaron just quoted from the 139th Psalm, where can you go from God? But we seem to live our lives as though we can get away from him sometimes, like he don't see what we're doing or what we're thinking. Hello? Makes all the difference in the world for me. I'm just saying. So here he is looking at us, hearing us, and many times I hear people pray as if he doesn't hear them. Did you, do you know that he heard you the first time that you prayed? What's the key to receiving anything that you get from the Lord? He says, if you ask anything, am I? So what does name mean? If you ask anything in my name, in my character, in my being, in who I am, in my power, my authority, you will receive it from the Lord. We miss that part. Hallelujah. That's part of the identity that has been stolen from the body of the Messiah. I'm speaking to a remnant of people right now. There's only going to be a remnant in the end. Hello? 
I didn't come. T- I came to bring a sword to divide what? I know many people going to hell because of their children or their spouses or some other member of your family because they've taken you away from your first love. And who is your first love? You want to know who my first love was? Me, myself, and I. Is that true for you too? Song of Solomon. I'm going to give you a chance to get there. Song of Solomon, chapter (laughs) 5. Wow, 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 wow. Man, if I could wake you up today, praise the Lord. Ah, I woke and I won't go back to sleep. I don't lost my mind because I have the mind of Christ and I'm going to die like this. I promise you all. Pastor Aaron was preaching last week. He was talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and that fiery furnace. Y'all remember that? How they were thrown and they were bound and they were thrown into the furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar made it seven times harder than it ought to be. You remember that song, right, brother? Whoa, Shadrach, hey there. Meshach, Abednego. <laughs> it was a song back in the day, which is saying. Anyway, <laughs> the servants of the king died as they threw them into the furnace. And the king was so perplexed. He was like, what in the world is going on in there? He, had, he was looking. Get out of the way. Let me see. Because he saw somebody else, another figure in the fire, right? Scripture says, he said, y'all come out of there, I'm paraphrasing. Come out of that, come out of the furnace. And they came out of the furnace. And what was burned? Was their hair burned? Clothes? Sandals? What was burned? Say it loud, say it again. They're changed. They weren't bound anymore. Let me say this to you. I used to regret some of the things I went through when I grew up. I regret them no longer. You know why? Because every rejection, every heartache, every injustice, he calls it all to work together for his good so Lester can die from his first love, which was himself. That he can open my eyes to see the Father. That's what your trials and your tribulations are all about. So you will deny yourself and confess him. So you will allow him to be present in you and through you wherever you are. Is that right? Am I lying to you? Or is that the truth? Are we walking in that truth? You don't have to answer. We already know. That's why we're in the mess that we're in. We're in this mess because the church has been asleep. I remember hearing a a message from Little Ravenhill years ago, and he says the church is a great sleeping giant. Wake up, wake up, you sleepyheads, as he would say. Oh, my goodness. Song of Solomon, 5, starting at verse 1. I've come to my garden, my sister, my spouse, I have... Gathered my mirror with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends. Drink, yes, drink deeply, O beloved ones. I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. Oh, yes. He knocks, saying, open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is covered with dew and my locks with drops of the night. I have taken off my robe. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I defile them? My beloved put his hands by the latch of the door, and my heart yearned for him. And I rose to open the door, and my beloved, for my beloved, for my hands, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock. I opened in my beloved for my beloved, but my beloved had returned away and was gone. 
and my heart leaped when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave no answer. Revelations, God says, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and I knock. What is required when someone knocks? If you do not open the door, does he come inside? No. What's inside? It's you. It's yourself. It's who you are. What does he want? All of that. Right? Many of us open the door. Oh, come on in, Lord. Have some supper with me. Now get out. I'm going to go back and live the way I want to live. Because I'm comfortable. Was she not comfortable? She heard his voice. Oh, she also in love. Oh, my heart is leaving. Yay! I can hear the voice of my beloved. But yet she stays in the bed. I've taken my shoes off. I got, took my robe off. I'm comfortable. I'm in my comfort zone. And I don't want to come out. I'm more intimate with me than with him. Does it sound familiar? I'm more intimate with me. I want to keep all of this intact. What good is it going to do if it's not a sacrifice? That's what we talked about the last time, rededicating your temple, presenting your body a living sacrifice to God. Is that right? Now, I've read some scriptures because I know religious people, if I don't read some scriptures, that y'all are going to stone me to death or something. So... And I don't want to get stoned to death. If somebody's calling me on New Year's Day during Sunday prayer, you know, I ought to go, whoo, hey, and put them on speakerphone. And I'm going to take that out of my pocket, get that distraction out of the way. Okay, Matthew chapter 25, real quick. All right, I was going to just read it to you while you're turning. Yeshua was talking about a parable. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like likened it to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And now five of them were wise and five of them foolish. For those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some oil of your, your oil. For our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, this there should not be enough for us and you. But go and gather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was what? Shut. And the door was shut. Have we not all been given the same opportunity? Yes? I'm sorry, did my Savior die for me alone? Or did he die for the world? Yes? Is there a God of this world? Is there a God of this world? He has a voice, does he not? So what was me? What's, I'll tell you what I learned from Peter Lord one time. Some of you heard this before. I was asking him, I said, so I used to call him Apostle Peter. Love that dude, man. I said, so how, how do you hear from the Holy Spirit? I asked him. And he said, well, I'm going to skip the accent. Love the accent, but he said it's like this. He says like a family living at the airport in the flight when the planes are flying over and the planes are flying over. You're over there for dinner and you're getting ready to eat and then a plane comes over and the dishes are shaking and the noise is going on and you're like holding on to everything and the family's going just eating just as calm as they can be. He said, why is that? I said, well, they just got used to the noise, the shaking and stuff. He said, yeah, but they have learned to tune it out. 
And if you want to hear from God, he says, you must tune out the voices of the world and begin to listen. To Then you will be able to hear the Spirit because now you're dialed into his frequency. Come on now. I was like, whoa. Okay. So I began to stop watching so much TV and doing so many other things and trying to hear from him. Because faith, again, I say this many times, comes by hearing and hearing what? The Word of God. Doubt comes by. Fear comes by. Bondage comes by. Everything other than the Word of And I've always been taught faith comes by hearing, so I had to come to church to hear. But it was then that I started reading my word out loud. Hallelujah. Because the word is spirit and it is. So when I read it out loud, what is coming out of my mouth? Spirit, breath, rock, right? That's what God did in the beginning. Is that right? So in the beginning, What was hovering over the face of the darkness? Then God said what? Let there be. So he spoke, right? And the word came forth, correct? It was not the sun and the moon, we know that, right? Because they weren't created until the fourth day. But it was his glory, it was the word. This all ties in because in John chapter 17, he says, the glory in which you've given me, I have given them. I have glorified your name. I have put you on display is what Yeshua says, right? Is that not what he said? So I'm going to send them out just like you send me. I'm not only praying for them, but I'm praying for those who will come after them who believed in their word. That's us. If we believe. Not everybody does. Many people say they do, Charlie, but their fruit says something entirely different. I can only judge by the fruit, right? I'm like this in conversation too, okay, y'all? Yeah. Personal conversation. I, I don't let people get away with what I used to let them get away with when they're talking and they get mad at me. They don't want to talk to me for a while, but if you come back, you can get the same thing. You're out of time, just in case you don't know. So you need to start speaking the language of the kingdom. If I haven't said it enough, I'll say it again. Speak the language of the kingdom. Stop speaking death into your own circumstances and stop agreeing with the world and agreeing with the kingdom of God and what he said. Because that word, his word, when it goes forth, it does not come back empty until it accomplishes what it is set out to do. The word that went forth still is accomplishing what it's set out to do. The prayer that was prayed is still being answered in each and every individual if you will allow it if not not if you're not prepared then the door shut and then what happens you're left outside John 3 very familiar scripture to you guys How am I doing, Eleanor? Am I doing all right? She's smiling. That's because she just got fed. That's why she she, 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 smiled. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his own Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name, in the name, and the power and authority of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world when men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come into the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth may be clearly seen that they 
have been done in God. I'm going to give you some practical examples because all I have to talk about is myself and I can tell you the truth about myself. I can tell you about other people, but I won't. All right. I'll use I'll use me as an example. OK, I've come to realize and I remember uh, everybody has memories of their family. And I, you know, one of the, the people I love the most in my family was my great grandmother and how she handled her business. You know, because I had a, a great aunt and she was an alcoholic and she was a cussing woman, you know, and a fighting woman. She was all of that. OK, she was rough, man. I'm just saying. But she loved us to death. She taught us how to fish and do all, every, everything. She spent time with us. And when we get whippings and spankings from her, she, she hit us with a shoe and we would pretend like it hurt, but it wasn't, you know. <laughs> anyway, she, it was this great dynamic in her and this and that. Well, <clears throat> she would get mad at my grandmama. And she would just start fussing and mama and blah, 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 And great grandmama would just, now she will say, Willie, Freddie, just calling her name. She says, mama, I don't want to hear you. Said, oh, the, you need to just humble yourself before the Lord. I don't know. So then my great grandma would get out. She was a blind woman. She would get up from the table and. She would start walking towards the room and she would have a hand up like this. Now, I'm a little bit of boy. I'm watching all this stuff. You got to understand, you, you make an impression. You either have a negative effect on people or a positive one. But you are affecting people where you are, whether you believe that or not. They're looking for something. They should be seeing the glory, right? So here she is. Here she is. She's walking, taking her slow steps, and she just fussing and cursing. And she's like, oh, step by step. We'll make this journey. I'm going to quit singing that song, but we must put our trust in God. And she's like, nah, 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 nah. Whoa, whoa, step by step. And she get to her room. She close. We'll make this journey. And she's out there going, <laughs> my great aunt. <laughs> wow. I'm like, wow, I learned to use that when I was in the military. Because my military career was not like Aaron's military career. I always ran into to prideful, narcissistic jerks, just to be honest, right? And I would use this tactic <laughs> that I saw from my grandmother on them. In other words, I would be not allow them to see me get angry in my facial expression, right? And they would tell me to do something. I'll tell you this one. You guys would appreciate this. You'll really love this, Martin. <laughs> he was, I, I just got reamed out by a senior NCO, and he was like, da, 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 da. And you just do what I tell you to do, and I don't want any attitude. I've never given him attitude, but he was like, da, 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 da. you know, I was like, okay, okay, okay. Is that, is that it, Sergeant? And then he would yell at me some more. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, okay. Well, see, he's mad because I'm not shaken by his words. And then that's what I did. Started to walk away. I'm like, I'm so excited. <laughs> I just... Man, get around here, get around here. So I come back over there. But what is it, Sergeant? Quit singing that song. I said, oh, okay, Sergeant. Okay. Another one bites the dust. Another one. Shut up, Smith, shut up. I'm like, now I know he can't tell me really to shut up, but I just kept on singing as I walked down the hallway. But all of this taught me, and if learn from me, learn from me. There will be people that will want to persecute you, mock you for what you believe. Scripture says, get angry, but sin not. When they are throwing barbs at you and you respond in your flesh, that's sin. You're supposed to respond with what? Messiah. Because we're supposed to have his character because we're his children. Is that right? This is what the, the earth and the world has not seen. I keep reminding you, that, well, I won't tell that story again. But I will bring up Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi said this. 
I would have become a Christian, except I observed them. What I saw didn't line up with what was written. And if you can't tell the lines are being drawn now in the sand, you're deeply, deeply asleep. If you're not getting ready for the things to come, not getting ready to stand, and how do you get ready to stand? You start standing now. One of, I have only one remedy for going through a hard time or going through a trial or going through tribulation. And I tell people this all the time. Praise the Lord. You know what else I start telling them? I'm not your daddy. He is. Hello? I can't deliver you. He can't. And he will. And that's a promise. And he has. It's already written. We just got to walk in it and walk it out. Now let me address this issue. Many, 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 many people, believers that say believers, don't believe that you can hear from God today. Y'all believe that? Huh? The most, how do you... How does God speak to you? He speaks to you through the word when you read the word. Absolutely true. Does the words jump off the page? Or is there something called Holy Spirit that's quickening your understanding? So we had a Savior that said, I'll do what I hear my... I'll say what I hear my father say. I'll do what I hear my father say. And then there's this Paul guy who was doing everything wrong. And on the road to Damascus, he got struck with blindness, didn't he? But him and his companions heard a what? Heard a voice. Well, let me tell you something. I hear him, and you should too. I started telling a story the other day at, at breakfast, and I got distracted about drinking uh, hot chocolate. Because I woke up one one day and, and uh, one day, yeah, because I'm sleeping during the day because I worked at night, <laughs> and I heard no more caffeine. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to stay awake if I don't have any caffeine? I'll sustain you. I said, okay. So I went to sleep. I got up. You gotta understand. I used to take with me a big gulp of tea or Mountain Dew. Okay, and I'm talking caffeine too. I was trying to get that caffeine. I even drunk a jolt cold one time. I thought I was going to die. You know, I thought it was almost making my heart stop inside. And then when it, when it wore off, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> trying to stay awake at night, okay? He said, I'll sustain you. So I went to, went to work, and I didn't drink my caffeine. And sure enough, I stayed awake. And uh, so some years later that I was drinking some hot chocolate, and uh, I'm working on the post with this guy, you know, cold night out and stuff. And he said, yeah, and I was witnesses to him telling him. And then that story came up and he goes, you know, there's caffeine and coffee. I said, what? No, I mean coffee, but hot chocolate. And I'm like, what? I didn't know there was caffeine and hot chocolate. So I got quiet and I went home and I said, Father, why didn't you tell me there was caffeine and hot chocolate? I wanted to drink the hot chocolate. I put away the Mountain Dews. I put away the, the caffeinated tea. I put all of it away. And he said, remember when I told you, when I called you? I'm like, oh, man. When he called me, I said, I, if I do this for you, you have to do one thing for me. You have to give me a burning desire for the word because I read the scriptures and I go to sleep. Makes me sleepy. I'm bored. So I went to work that night, and I read from the time I got there until the sun began to rise. And night after night after night, it was the same way, just like that. And so he reminded me of that. I'm like, yeah. He said, it wasn't, it wasn't the caffeine. It was your intention, your intention. 
you are using it to do something that I am here to do. Like, oh my gosh. I'm like, oh. You see, I was becoming addicted to something without realizing it. Are you following me? Yes, ma'am. Did you say intentions or attention? Intentions, my intentions. My intention was to have that Caffeine keep me awake and to keep me vibrant and to keep me alert. That wasn't his desire. It's a very, very simple thing. But I heard him, we had a conversation like you and I would have a conversation. Doesn't tell me everything all at once, but he gives me parts. And I just run with what he gives me until he gives me something else. There's been many times I've been on my way home from work after working at midnight. I'm in my car and I'm talking to him and I'm praying and I have to pull over because I can't keep driving. I want that for everybody, that intimacy with him. He wants that with his children. He wants to be to you a father, not just God. Hello? We can never take away God. But do we ever get Father? Abba. Right? So let me close with this. And I'm closing. Everything I've learned, everything I am, everything I do, it's for the glory of God. I stand before you a man today with no offenses against anyone. Not one single person that I know in my mind. I stand before you today as a man that has been wrong and many injustices have been wrought against me as a young man, as a grown man, and I hold no offenses with anyone. Why? Why? Do you know why? Because Lester's all that in a bag of chips? Nope. The Holy Spirit is, though. Huh? All it requires for me to do is to what? Yield myself to him. Submit myself. Humble myself before him. And to say, and mean, not my will, but your will be done. On the cross, Yeshua cried out what? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama tabatana. Why did he cry out at that time? Because the Holy Spirit, what? Withdrew. I don't want you to miss this and understand this. The first time in his known being did he not feel the presence of God, had he known not having the presence of God with him. And he did that so that you could, wouldn't have to be apart from him either. It wasn't the stripes hanging on the cross. It was that moment that he cried out. Because he was willing to experience something he never experienced before for us. So I'll leave you with this question. Is not the lamb that was slain worthy of the fruit of his suffering? Is he not worthy of the fruit of his death? Is he? To me, he is. I'm going to pray over here, okay? If y'all don't mind. <laughs> Please join in with us today. Show your support and bless God's people by heading on over to holylandmarketplace.com. For more teachings, visit, support, or donate at torahclass.com. Join with us in worship and enjoy God's word at Seat of Abraham Fellowship.